Welcome back to another Geatsleys video where we talk about one of our favorite things, clones. In the past, we've tried to dig deep and analyze every kind of specialized clone trooper in the GAR and Imperial armies, such as when we broke down the snow troopers. In today's video, we'll do a 180 and go from snowy frozen deserts to sandy scorching ones. You guessed it. We'll be talking about the sand troopers and how their armor and gear evolved from the early days of the Clone Wars up until the time of the Galactic Empire. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Technically, Sand Trooper wasn't an official designation in the GAR. We'll be using the term to refer to any trooper that was specially trained and equipped to operate in desert or beach environments, but the term was initially a nickname for Imperial Desert Stormtroopers, who were the successors of the GAR's clone Desert Troopers first spotted during the Second Battle of Geonosis. Deserts, as you can probably guess, are unforgiving environments to live in, much less conduct military operations in. Any trooper operating in one first had to deal with the extreme temperature fluctuations. Due to their geography and the general lack of shade, deserts reach extremely high temperatures during the day when the sun is out, and extremely low temperatures at night when the sands soak any remaining heat in. Sand trooper gear had to take these extreme fluctuations into consideration, ensuring that the trooper was protected against both extremes. Another factor troopers had to be protected against was the sand. All memes about it being rough, coarse, and getting everywhere, it really was a problem. Sand is rough and it does get into cracks and crevices. The extra friction caused by sand lodged in gear, armor seams, mechanical parts, or blasters could damage the equipment, cause it to fail, or otherwise add to the daily wear and tear. Additionally, sand could be really challenging to walk on. The ever-shifting terrain exhausted troopers far more quickly than marching on solid land, and sand slides could prove treacherous to any vehicles that relied on treads. Difficult terrain didn't just make life difficult for the sand troopers, however. It meant that resupplying was difficult, as was receiving reinforcements. Most of the time, any troopers stationed out in the desert had to get comfortable with the idea that they were on their own, and help wouldn't come in time, if at all. Add to that, deserts were generally unfriendly places, with volatile nomadic people like the Tuscan Raiders, wild animals that were perfectly content with canned food, and sandstorms powerful enough to strip the meat off your bones. Overall, 10 out of 10 would live in again. Now, like sane people, every generation of sand trooper went into these hostile litter boxes, specially equipped with adaptive gear suited for their desert environments. We'll go over them in more detail, but here are a few general characteristics. To start with, the sand trooper's armor was their first line of defense against the elements. A special reflective coating reflected most of the heat from the sun during the day. Combined with the built-in cooling systems their suits and helmets came with, this helped the troopers stay cool during the extreme heat of the day. During the night, their suits' insulation helped retain heat within, much like the snow troopers' armor did. Their suits were also specially designed to seal tightly, preventing sand or dust from seeping in from the outside. Advanced filters in their helmets kept the dust out of their lungs, even during a raging sandstorm, and of course, just the suit's existence prevented said violent sandstorms from flaying the skin from their bones, which was a big plus. To deal with the difficult terrain underfoot, sand troopers out on patrol or recon missions relied on small repulsor craft such as the BARC or 74Z, or local transport animals like dewbacks or banthus. When out on rescue missions, they used LAATs to transport and retrieve troops. With the general background info out of the way, let's take a more specific look at the different generations of what we consider sand troopers. The first generation of sand troopers were first seen during the Second Battle of Geonosis in 21 BBY. These were the Galactic Republic's clone desert troopers. In Star Wars The Clone Wars, we got to see a battalion of desert troopers descend on the sandy mesas of Geonosis under the command of Jedi General Obi-Wan Kenobi and Commander Cody. Geonosis was a barren desert planet in the Outer Rim, known for its red deserts and mesas. Although some of the planet's surface wasn't just covered in sand, as many imagined deserts to be, 
The arid climate and lack of vegetation meant that even the mountainous landscape was a job best left to the desert troopers. Their mission was to take out a number of battle droid factories, and despite the Republic's heavy losses when the troop transports crashed, the battle resulted in a decisive Republic victory. During their first ever appearance, the desert troopers wore desert camo, ARF trooper armor, with a distinctive yellow mark. To help them navigate the harsh terrain, they relied on vehicles such as the ATRT, the ATTE, and Republic juggernaut tanks. Each trooper was issued a survival backpack that contained additional rations and water in case they found themselves stranded with no evac available. Desert troopers usually ended up facing Geonosian B1 battle droid variants, but often found themselves fighting the elements more than the enemy. For weaponry, they carried standard issue DC-15S blasters and DC-15A blaster rifles. The Desert Troopers' highly skilled units played an important role in Republic victories on arid worlds like Geonosis and Tatooine. After the rise of the Galactic Empire, the units were assimilated into the Imperial military and reformed into the Imperial Sand Trooper Corps. The Imperial Desert Storm Trooper, also referred to as Sand Troopers, were a specialized unit of stormtroopers in the Imperial Army. Alongside their standard stormtrooper training, they had additional experience in surviving harsh desert environments and hazards. Like their Republic predecessors, they were equipped with specialized gear to help them overcome the desert, such as inbuilt cooling systems in their armor, filtration systems, and polarized lenses for their helmets, and reflective coating on their armor. To distinguish themselves from standard stormtroopers and designate their rank, sand troopers wore colored pauldrons attached to their armor. Privates wore all black pauldrons, squad leaders had orange pauldrons, and sergeants and above had white. Just like their clone predecessors, the Imperial sand troopers relied heavily on their survival backpack, which contained several liters of purified water, a vaporator that could extract water from the atmosphere, and long-range compiling a collapsible reflective shelter in case they were ever caught out in the elements. As for their weaponry, all sand troopers carried E-11 blaster rifles, DLT-19 or RT-97C heavy blaster rifles, and T-21 light repeating blasters. Imperial Desert Stormtroopers were stationed on many dusty worlds under the Empire's control during the Galactic Civil War, such as Tatooine. Their specialized gear was instrumental in maintaining the Empire's control over these worlds, especially those in the Outer Rim, farther away from the Empire's Central Command. But we did mention that sand troopers didn't just operate in the desert. Beaches also have a lot of sand on them, at least some of them do. So we'll briefly look at those troopers whose job it was to guard the galaxy's beaches. Coastal Defender Stormtroopers, also known as Shore Troopers, were another specialized unit of stormtrooper trained to operate in tropical environments. That said, there were few beaches in the Empire that really warranted a specialized guard, so shore troopers were a rare breed and were often reassigned to other posts as the need arose. It was also more common for one specialized shore trooper to lead a squad of regular stormtroopers, rather than the entire squad being specialized, like the desert stormtroopers were. Most shore troopers were stationed on the planet Scarif, where they patrolled the beaches around the Imperial security complex. They carried both the E-11 blaster rifle and its newer model, the E-22 reciprocating rifle, as well as thermal imploders. Shore troopers could hold one of three ranks, each distinguished by their unique armor markings. Regulars had sand-colored armor with red band around the right arm and a white stripe on the left shoulder guard. Squad leaders had a blue stripe on their chest plates up to the shoulders, as well as a karma strapped to their belt. Finally, captains wore blue chest plates with one sandy and one blue pauldron, and various stripes along their armor. But this wasn't the Sand Troopers' final form. No. They evolved further and reached a level of enlightenment no other Stormtrooper could ever dream of. Finally, no video on Sand Troopers would be complete without mentioning the ruthless Imperial Beach Stormtroopers. Beach Troopers were a specialized unit that combined the standard Stormtrooper helmet with a swimsuit, whether that was swimming trunks or speedos, far greater maneuverability. Although they were most commonly found enduring the luxuries of a hot bath or a spa, they were highly trained soldiers, ready to spring to action the moment an enemy reared their intrusive head. 
Near at hand was a blaster and an ascension gun. During the Galactic Civil War, they saw action aboard the Devastator and the Death Star, as well as in Cloud City during the occupation of Bespin. Despite their limited screen time, we're certain the Beach Troopers were the final step in the Sand Troopers' evolution, thus making them the most elite version of these hardened desert soldiers. So, that's our look at the epic evolution of Sand Troopers. Which specialized unit of trooper would you like us to take a look at next? Feel free to let us know in the comments section below.